Hey, how are you? We're going to have a quick look at while loops in Python. A while loop is a control structure in Python that tests a pre-existing condition. Often the condition is set up prior to the loop. So the syntax of it, or the rules, how you use it, the syntax of a while loop in Python programming language is while, so the keyword while, and then you have an expression. Okay, this expression has to evaluate to either true or false. And then you have a colon at the end, and then you have statements. So the statements can be a set of statements in the second example there. Um, and you will notice that all the statements that are indented are included in the while loop. Okay, so the while loop has a code block underneath it. And the way you define the code block underneath it after the colon is that you indent all the lines. And this white space, this indentation at the beginning of the lines, very important in Python. Okay, so here a statement, maybe a single statement or a block of statements. The condition may be any expression and true is any non-zero value. The loop iterates while the condition is true. So in other words, it will continue going round and round until that loop condition becomes false. Okay, in Python, all the statements indented by the same number of character spaces after a programming construct are considered to be part of a single block of code. Python uses indentation as a method of grouping statements. So as I said, you, after the colon, you need to have an indentation and they all need to be the same. So sometimes you'll get an indentation error. And that's what it's talking about. Okay, let's have a look at a flowchart. Okay, so a while loop can have a pre-existing condition, so you can set the condition up before you hit the pre the, um, the while statement. So the while statement is, the condition is on that line of the while statement, and if it is true, it'll go off and execute the code block, all indented, remember. And then once it's finished executing the code block, it goes around and checks to see the condition again. Now, this condition might get changed inside the code block, okay? And if that condition does get changed and is still true, it will continue. If it does get changed but it is no longer true, in other words, false, then it will go down and execute the next line of code after the indentation has finished. Got it? Okay, let's have a look at some examples then. Okay, the first example we're going to look at is a little while loop that goes and counts three times. Now you can either count up or you can count down. So we initialize the counter. So we create a variable here and we set it to equal to three, or whatever number you want. And then while the counter is greater than zero, do your code block. So notice that this is all indented here by one tab. So I call it set to four character spaces. Um, and then as it goes through, it executes each one of these lines. And this line here is an interesting one because what it says, it takes the counter and then it makes the counter value equal to the counter current counter value minus one. So the first time round, it'll be three minus one. So it'll then become two. And then press enter to loop again. So off we go. So if I go and run this by pressing F5, hopefully it'll pop up here. Do, do, do. Here we go. So this while loop counts down, there are three loops left. Press enter to loop again. So enter to loop again. There are now two loops left. Enter to loop again. There is now one loop left. Enter and it'll finish. When I say there are three, two, and one loops left, it's actually in the middle of executing that loop. So if we look here, back at the code, you'll see that this is actually where we are on that loop. Okay, so that's my first example. Second example is where you want something to play again. Okay, so um, again, we go and set up the condition before we get into the while loop. So play again becomes equal to yes. This initializes the variable for the while loop. So while play again is equivalent to 
yes, or play again is equivalent to y. So if either or, it doesn't matter which one, uh, works for both yes and a y. Print, do this, do this code block. Okay, so again, notice that all this code block is indented by at least one indentation. Okay, four characters on my setup. Now you can have other code along here which indents it more. So if you have an if statement or another while statement or a for loop, that would indent it even more. But as soon as you finish doing the indents, the code finishes. So we've got a few print statements. This while loop will keep looping as long as the player keeps answering a yes or a Y, but will not work if the user enters a capital Y. So play again equals input. Do you want to play again? Yes or no? So this last line here is where we're updating the condition. Okay, so let's have a go at playing it. I'm pressing F5. And this while loop will keep looping as long as the player keeps answering yes or Y but will not work if the entry uses a capital. So do you want to play again? I'm going to go yes. And it goes again. Do, let's bring it down so you can see it. He says, ah. No, that's not it. Do you want to play again? Yes or no? This time I'm going to go Y. And it loops again. And the last time, I'm going to go no, which you can't actually see, and it's actually finished. Do, do, do. Uh, let's see if I can grab that. So, do, do, do. And I said no, and it finished straight away. Okay, so that's the second example. Now, the third one is a continuous while loop. This one goes on forever and ever and ever. So when I run this, you're going to see my screen going. Okay, so no pre-existing condition. And while true, so we're just saying while true is true, true is always true, it'll keep looping. Okay, so as soon as I hit go again, it'll just go. He says, there we go. And the way to get out of this is control C. So you press control C on your keyboard and that kills it. So this loop will run forever. This goes loopy again and again. You don't need to modify anything in the loop if you don't want. Okay, so it'll just keep going and going and going. And the next example is a continuous loop that lets you break out. So again, no pre-existing conditions are set up. So all we're saying is while it is true, print this while loop can run forever but it goes, and goes loopy again and again. But this time you can escape if you want. So we're introducing a new keyword here called break, and that will allow you to escape if you want to. So a break command in the loop will actually break out of the loop. Again, so while keyword, then the condition, which is true, then you have the colon, and then you have the code block. So all of this here is indented even when it goes even further indented. So let's have a go at this and we'll run it. Uh, F5, click OK. Now I will try and grab this down a little bit so it's just visible. Uh, right, OK, this one loop run forever. Um, goes loopy again and again, but this time you can escape. Do you want to? I'm going to say no, because I don't want to. So I'm going to say in for no this time. Keeps going. Now I'm going to say why. And it stops. Okay, so that's a really useful little tool to get you out of it. Okay, so the last example we're going to do is... This while loop forces or limits the user to enter a one or a two. So this is, you've got a situation where you want the user to enter just two or characters, or you can add more. Um, so we set up the pre-existing condition. Okay, so in this thing, we're looking to select a cave. The user can either select uh, cave one 
or cave two. So we need the user to enter this test one or two. So cave is set up as a variable and it has nothing in it. So it is an empty variable. So while, the keyword while there, cave does not equal string one and cave does not equal string two, it's going to keep looping. So print which cave would we want to go into, one or two, cave equals input, and then it hopefully they'll enter one or two, in which case you just tell them, well done, you've input, you've entered one or two. If they go off and try and play silly buggers, then it'll just loop around and say, ah, uh ah, -uh, give me a cave one or give me a cave two. So let's run this and have a quick look. Do, do, do. Ah, okay, you must choose a cave. Which cave do you want to choose? It's one or two. I'm being a bit naughty here, so I'm going to choose cave five. And say, so, ah, uh -uh, which cave do you want to pay? All right, I'm going to say two, because two, yeah? Uh -uh. So it's that making them enter one or two. So I can enter anything I like here, and it'll just keep on looping. But as soon as I enter one or two, it finishes the loop. So, and it says, you chose cave one. So go back and have a quick look at this. Cave equals there, uh, or cave does not equal one, or cave does not equal two. Print which cave do you want to go into, blah, blah, blah. Cave equals input, so that's where you, you enter the one or the two. And if you enter one or two, it'll jump out of the loop and finish. Okay, I hope you found that all interesting. I'll put all these examples up on the Google site very soon. Good luck, people. Uh, control.